great things going on. And, you know, with respect to North Korea, remember how strong it was, and they were saying, this is going to be nuclear war. We're going to have it. No. You know what gets you nuclear war? Weakness gets you nuclear war. Being weak gets you nuclear war. That's what gets you nuclear war. $230, that's the amount of military spending last year for each person on the planet. It adds up to almost $2 trillion, or 2.2% of the world's economy. Military spending in China rose the most last year, based on the latest figures from the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, or SIPRI. The $12 billion boost leads a 29-year upward trend in Asia, China's $228 billion budget is being spent on some big ticket purchases. Aircraft carriers don't come cheap. China has bought one and has two more under construction. Well, Kirsten, these reports are coming from the US media outlet CNBC based on uh, anonymous sources supposedly with uh, knowledge of US intelligence. And they claim that China over the past 30 days has moved surface-to-air and anti-ship missiles onto three bases in the Spratly Island chain, which is just to the west of the Philippines in the South China Sea. Uh, these bases have been built on disputed reefs. They don't resemble reefs these days. They look very much like sophisticated Chinese military bases with airstrips. Uh, we had uh, satellite images last year showing what appeared to be missile batteries being installed. So in some ways it's not surprising that now we have reports of the missiles themselves uh, being deployed to the islands. Um, but uh, at this point it is unconfirmed. Uh, the US uh, military hasn't uh, commented on the report or given any confirmation of what they know. And over here in Beijing uh, there is not confirmation either whether or not these reports are accurate. The Chinese government is ramping up its activities in the South China Sea as the nuclear situation in North Korea dominates the region's attention. We've raised concerns directly with the Chinese about this, uh, and there will be near-term and long-term consequences. In recent weeks, the military installed new equipment, anti-aircraft and anti-ship missiles, as well as jamming systems on three separate islands in disputed territory off its coast. Jurisdiction over these island clusters in the South China Sea is hugely contentious. There are at least five claimants to a variety of these islands, Vietnam, Malaysia, Philippines, China, and Taiwan. Also, Brunei has a claim. China's construction of bases on these islands has been underway since 2014, and the landscape today, as shown in satellite images, is drastically altered because of it. The U.S. position has always been that China's claims to these islands are invalid and any military installations violate international law. The Trump administration's made this issue a centerpiece of its foreign policy towards China, the president himself keeping the issue front and center in his engagements with President Xi. But with China's latest bold moves to militarize the islands, some experts are beginning to question whether this issue can be resolved diplomatically. There's a limit to what the U.S. or any country can do uh, because China is pretty clearly now signaling that it's prepared to use force. The activity poses a, a true a threat to our airmen. Um, we have um, formally demarched the Chinese government and we've requested that the Chinese investigate these incidents. It's a serious matter and so we're taking it very seriously. Okay. Now, Chinese military observers say that the beams could be used simply to scare birds off of the airfield or to disrupt the activities of spy drones. They also point out that China is a signatory of the protocol on blinding laser weapons, which outlaws the use of equipment that could cause permanent blindness. This is China's only overseas military base, located in the African country of Djibouti, just a few kilometers away from a very strategic U.S. military base. Now, you can bet with two key military setups so close together, the two geopolitical rivals are looking for any possible secret info they can get from each other. They've even admitted as much. We have taken, we are taking significant steps on the counterintelligence side so that we have all the defenses that we need there. There's no doubt about that. That's General Waldhauser, the top commander of U.S. military forces in Africa. Well, if you watch cable news or read the Washington Post, you know America has only one enemy in the world. It's called Russia. 
But the truth may be more complicated than that. The biggest threat to this country is not Vladimir Putin. That's ludicrous. The biggest threat, obviously, is China. China spies on us more than any other country. It is behind the massive OPM hack carried out from 2012 through 2014. It has, of course, the world's largest population. It will soon have the world's largest economy. Its military is growing rapidly in strength. It even manufactures most of the fentanyl that is killing tens of thousands of Americans every year. Americans assume that this country is on top and will be forever, but could we find ourselves overtaken before we know it, imminently even? You're the crowd's man uh, after a while. You know, it's not, it's not uh, Jim Carrey who can walk down the street just, just uh, you know, doing anything he wants to and get away with it because nobody knows you. You know, after a while, hopefully it'll be to the point where I can't walk out in the street. Won't that be fun? <laughs> where, where, where it'll be impossible to, to walk anywhere without being recognized. I have no idea. Well, you don't know. Jimmy Fallon doesn't know. David Letterman doesn't know. We don't know. All the comics and show business don't know what this is. <laughs> right? Yeah. What is it? Come on, Jimmy. Seriously. The time is up. People are hip to this kind of stuff. I, I'm here tonight to blow the lid off it, to be the whistleblower. I'm sick and tired of the secrets and the lies. It is the secret symbol of the Luminati, and you're a part of it. And it is uh, the all mocking tongue. Oh. I like it. <laughs> it is a straight It's the symbol of the all mocking tongue. <laughs> and I'm sick of it. I want everybody to be in on the joke, man. You know what I mean? Like, it, for years now, talk show hosts, people on television, people in sitcoms have been hired by the government to throw you off the track, to distract you, to make you laugh and stuff like that, make you happy and docile so you don't know what's really going on, you know? And they get out there in the woods in a circle naked and they decide these things and, you know, and you know, look at them, look at them trying to, look at them trying to come up. It's hilarious, hilarious. I've read a couple of places where the, you said you've had, you've struggled with depression from time to time. I was on Prozac for a long time. Yep, I was on Prozac for for a long time, and I I'm not sure. I mean, it may have helped me out of a uh, a jam for a little bit, but people stay on it forever. You know, I, I had to get off at a certain point because I realized that you know everything's just okay. No like, peaks and valleys. There are peaks, there are valleys, but they're all kind of carved and smoothed out, and it feels like a low level of despair you live in where you're not getting any answers but you're living okay and you can smile at the office you know but it's it's a low level of despair and you don't take any of them or you don't take anything now nothing i don't take anything i rarely drink coffee i'm very serious about no alcohol no drugs i just life is too beautiful so he draws his strength now from the spiritual side of his life Despite a rare Los Angeles downpour, oh, geez, man. he insisted on taking us to his secret spot, where he goes to shut out the rest of the world. You want to come? Come on. It's fun. This is beautiful. After a five-minute climb up a trail on his property, we finally reach our destination. This is my spot. 
This is uh, the center of the universe. This is where I hang out with uh, Buddha and Krishna and, uh, you know, all those guys. Are you a Jesus. Buddhist? I'm a Buddhist, I'm a Muslim, I'm a Christian, I'm whatever you want me to be. Uh, uh, you know, it all comes down to the same thing. You're in a loving place or you're in an unloving place. If you're with me right now, we cannot be unhappy. It's not possible. It's not possible. After talking to you for a couple of hours, I mean, I just, I get this sense, you are, you are a big bundle of conflicting emotions. Really? Don't you, you think? Is, you get that sense from me? Well, I think you're very emotional about a lot of things. It's all very close to the surface. Yeah, it is. I've decided to be there. I only act in the movies. Eckhart's philosophy is basically about the idea that the present moment is all we have. It's all there is and all there ever will be. And uh, most of us live uh, trapped or lost in the movement of thought. Sometimes I've, I've spent two hours of my day thinking about one person I resent. You know, and going through orations and, you know, if he ever says this, I'll say that and, and all of those things. And, and you go, I, I find myself now when I get caught up in something like that, becoming conscious suddenly and going, oh, wait, I'm here. I'm not with that person right now. I'm creating things that don't even exist, you know, and it's useless. It's time badly spent. I'm not saying that I'm a guru or anything like that. I'm not saying I'm a you know, some kind of holy man or anything like Jesus. <laughs> but we do have similar facial hair. <laughs> Not the real Jesus. Nobody really knows what the real Jesus looked like. But the Willem Dafoe Jesus. And the <laughs> Jim Cabezel Jesus. Which is still quite an accomplishment. As an actor, you play characters, and then if you go deep enough into those characters, you realize that your own character is pretty thin to begin with. Oh. You know? And then you suddenly have this separation and go, well, who's Jim Carrey? Oh, he doesn't exist, actually. There's, there's just a, a relative manifestation of consciousness, and then somebody gave him a bunch of ideas. They gave him a name and a religion and a nationality. And he clustered those together into something that's supposed to be a personality. Hey, Jim Carrey. Yes. What? I've covered a lot of fashion weeks. This is the first time I've run in to Jim Carrey. Wait, tell me, is it true you're wandering the streets? You need a date to the party? What's up? No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm doing just fine. Uh, I just, uh, you know, there's no meaning to any of this. So I, uh, I wanted to find the most meaningless thing that I could come to and join. And, uh, and, uh, and here I am. They're celebrating. I mean, you got to admit, it's completely meaningless. Well, they say they're celebrating icons inside. Celebrating Do you icons. In icons. Boy, that is just the absolute lowest aiming, you know, possibility that we could come up with it's like icons what do you do you believe in icons i don't I believe in personalities i don't believe that you exist but there is a, a wonderful fragrance in the air you don't believe certain icons have the power to make change to think differently to be bold to inspire others artistry you're one of them on the good foot ha! yeah you shut it down now yeah, no, I, uh, I, I don't believe in icons. Uh, I don't believe in personalities. I believe that peace lies beyond personality, beyond invention and disguise, beyond the red S that you wear on your chest that makes bullets bounce off. I believe that it's deeper than that. I believe we're a field of energy dancing for itself. And uh, I don't care. But Jim, you got really dressed up for the occasion. You look good. No, I Was didn't that an get accident? dressed up. I didn't get dressed Who up. Who did? There, there is no me. There's no you. No. We're not here. This is a dream? There's just things happening. And there are clusters of tetrahedrons moving around together. Okay. Yeah. So what's happening in our world right now? Because there is a lot of news that actually is relevant that's not that yeah. Here's uplifting. the thing. It's not our world. None that's of this is key. real? Nope. nope. So you're just passing We don't through. matter. We don't matter. Oh, wow. There's the good news. Okay.
This is a message for Emma Stone. Emma, I just wanted to let you know that uh, I think you're all the way beautiful. Not just pretty, but, you know, smart and kind-hearted. And if I were a lot younger, I would marry you. And we would have chubby little freckle-faced kids. And we'd laugh all day long and go camping and play Yahtzee and tell ghost stories by the fire. And sex. And every day for the rest of your life, you would thank God that I was the appropriate age for you. God, I'm not. I'm 49. I have lines on my face, sometimes a little gray in my beard, and it takes me a lot longer to pee than it used to. These are the only discernible signs of aging that I can find so far. Anyway, I just wanted to let you know how I felt. I think you're pretty special. And I wish you continued success and artistic fulfillment. But most of all, I wish you love and contentment. That's all. started painting a lot I had become so obsessed that there was nowhere to move in my home paintings were everywhere they were becoming a part of the furniture I was eating on them I found myself looking around at one point in a really bleak winter in New York and it was just so depressing and I think I needed color it's getting kind of pedestrian to me now the teal you know what I'd like to do is just start threading in some purple, you know, into these things. Uh, I'll find the ultimate color and I'll be able to reproduce it. You can tell what I love by the color of the paintings. You can tell my inner life by the darkness in some of them. And you can tell what I want from the brightness in some of them. When I was a kid, I spent half my time in the living room performing for people. I spent the other half the time in my bedroom by myself, writing poetry and sketching. I was not the type of kid you could say, as a punishment, go to your room, because my room was heaven to me. My isolation was welcome. People that are different have a shot at being original. You know, they got motivation yeah. too. You know, they got motivation. I sketched all the time, but I didn't do a lot of painting. Suddenly, six years ago, at a time when I was trying to heal a broken heart, I decided, well, maybe I'll paint. When your heart is in love, you're floating, weightless. But when you lose that love, you have to re-enter the atmosphere. And it can get pretty rough. And then you start to float again. The energy that surrounds Jesus is electric. I don't know if Jesus is real. I don't know if he lived. I don't know what he means. But the paintings of Jesus are really my desire to convey Christ consciousness. I wanted you to have the feeling when you looked in his eyes that he was accepting of who you are. I wanted him to be able to stare at you and heal you from the painting. You can find every race in the face of Jesus. And I think that's how every race imagines Jesus. They imagine him as their own. That's pretty. Funny, I get so stuck when I'm trying to choose colors, but when I just grab them, it's cool. I don't know what painting teaches me. I, I know that it just frees me. 
free from the future, free from the past, free from regret, free from worry. Something inside you is always telling a story. I believe every single thing that you see and hear is talking to you. You know, the bottom line with all of this, whether it's performance or it's art or it's sculpture, is love. We want to show ourselves and have that be accepted. I love being alive and the art is the evidence of that. Mm -hmm.